everyone, and thanks so much for watching. And thanks so much for watching the Buff Life. I'm coming to you today off of the recliner. <laughs> I'm going to start calling this the recliner series. So today I thought I'd talk to you about something um, that I've heard that was announced just a little while ago, and it was that they cured a second person of HIV. Now, if you've never heard about the first person, well, that took place 12 years ago. And 12 years ago, they talked about how they did it. So basically, there was a guy who was HIV positive, and he also had cancer. So in order to treat the cancer, they decided that they wanted to give him chemotherapy and radiation and then give him a bone marrow transplant. So they did the chemotherapy, they did the radiation, and they gave him two bone marrow transplants. Well, basically what that did is it eradicated his immune system. He started to grow a new immune system, basically. And that immune system was basically immune to HIV. So fast forward, it's been 12 years now since that happened, and that they called him the Berlin patient. And I guess there's some British people or somewhere they have an immune immunity to HIV. So I guess that's where it all stemmed from. But here we are 12 years later, and now they said they've cured a second person. Now, they haven't discussed how they've cured this second person. But some people are, and doctors and scientists are saying, well, it's not a cure. It's a long-term remission. And I can get that because it's been 12 years. They don't know if you know, the guy really has, if it's going to come back or not. But 12 years is very good. So they're going to announce um, their findings. And I think there's going to be called, let me take a look here. Yeah, they're going to announce it in a magazine, well, the journal Nature. It's a periodical. And they're going to announce that soon and how that came about. But I, when I heard this, it just made me really excited to know that there are steps being taken to eradicate this horrible disease. So when I heard that, I immediately went on and looked at different articles about it and everything. And it just amazed me to know that a person has had remission for that long. So uh, I went on and I was looking at the New York Times and they had an article and I listened to it. I listened to it, it was actually an uh, audio clip uh, of an interview that a reporter by the name of Michael Bavaro uh, did with, he interviewed a gentleman by the name of Peter Staley. Now, Peter Staley is a person who has AIDS, and he was basically diagnosed in 1983. He was he used to work on Wall Street, and before he moved to New York, um, he, he lived somewhere else and he was like closeted. He was in the closet. He was gay, but he was in the closet. But when he moved to New York, he became an openly gay man because he actually started meeting people who were just like him. And he said where he was living before, he never really, I think it was Virginia. He said that he didn't really have anybody around him like himself. So he couldn't really talk to them and relate. So when he moved to New York, it was a whole new way of living. Well, he gets there, he meets his boyfriend and uh, so one day him and his boyfriend are watching TV because there's a movie coming on called The First Frost. Now, The First Frost is a movie starring Aiden Quinn. And it's a story about a young man in his prime that contracts the HIV virus. It's actually one of the first movies they've ever made about it. Well, in this movie, Aiden Quinn is coughing severely. Um, he's hacking and coughing. And it just so happened that Peter had a cough similar to his. But during the movie, as he's watching it, his boyfriend says to him, you sound just like this guy on TV. And they talk about it, and he has a little concern. So two weeks later, he gets in to see his doctor. Now, his doctor is an openly gay doctor, and he happens to be one of those doctors who gets a little paranoid about his patients. So all the patients that come in to get checked out, he always does a CDC on them because he wants to catch anything as quickly as possible. So he goes in. Of course, they do the CBC on Peter. And then he, he leaves. And a couple days later, he's at work and he gets a call at work from the doctor's office. And it's the nurse saying that the doctor would like him to come in to do more testing uh, because they found a little abnormality in his um, blood work. So he keeps, he keeps pushing the nurse and pushing the nurse. And finally, the doctor gets on the phone and he's pushing the doctor and pushing the doctor. And the doctor basically said, well, 
the abnormalities in your blood work um, could indicate that you have AIDS. And we need to do more testing to find out for sure. So he said like when he heard that, his whole world just stopped. stopped. So he goes in for the testing and sure enough, he is diagnosed with AIDS. And he said it's like a clock started in his head. Like I've only got so long to live at this point. And immediately he's asking his doctor, where can I go for treatment? And at that time in 1983, there were no places for treatment. They were still not really sure about this virus. So he decided that he wanted to quit his job. He didn't want to go be at work every day on Wall Street knowing that he was going to die. So the very next day he goes into work, he goes to a supervisor and he lays it all on the line and then he leaves. And he says what he does in the, in the very next in the, within the very next week, he joins a, I think it's the Gay Men's Health Group. I believe that's what it's called. Well, basically it's about us, a group of men who are suffering from different conditions. Uh, most of them were HIV or AIDS patients. And so then he was there in support groups. And what he said, this is the part that got me the most. He was like, in the support group, everybody would talk about dying and talk about giving up on all these different things they used to do, including sex and not living life. And he said there was one guy who said he didn't know. He said, I don't know what the hell you guys are talking about. I'm going to continue to live my life to the fullest. I'm not going to lay down. I'm going to fight with every ounce of my being. And then Peter said to himself, wow, this is the guy that I want to be friends with. I mean, that's what I'm talking about. So I gave him some resilience. And two weeks later, he finds himself at a demonstration, a protesting basically, outside the Food and Drug Administration. And the reason that they're protesting outside the Food and Drug Administration was simply because at that time, there were so many different medications that the Food and Drug Administration here in the United States hadn't approved that they were using in other countries to combat this condition, this disease. And they were just fighting to get some things put in place like test groups and or study groups and medication trials and something to get something started. And the Food and Drug Administration wasn't hearing that. Well, at least that's what he thought. So at the end of that year, a year late, less than a year later, the Food and Drug Administration starts releasing all this new information and all these medications they're going to try. They have test trials and study groups, and they're trying to get something for this. So he immediately gets into one of those and tries different things. Now, if you're not familiar with how they treat it now, they basically use three different types of medication to treat AIDS. And basically... Uh, they're tried, They're basically to stop the spread of AIDS in your body. Three different medications. And that's the way they feel that these three medications should work really great for people. And apparently it has because uh, Peter has, uh, is still here in 2019. So he talked about when he found out how he had to tell his parents, he had to tell you know people in his family, and it was just, he, they rallied around him. And that was great. A lot of people don't get that though. So he was really lucky to get that. And then, you know, it's just, I don't like it when people look down on others because of what their conditions might be. I even heard one time, I'm at the doctor's office and we were looking at something on TV and it was something someone had been diagnosed with AIDS. And I heard this guy say to his friend, yeah, well, he shouldn't have been doing this and he shouldn't have been doing that. And it's just like the absolute wrong way to take things and attitude to have because you don't know how that person contracted that virus. Just just because it's that doesn't mean it was sexually. You could have had a blood transfusion. You could have had a partner who was not monogamous and was out there cheating and gave it to you by no, for nothing you did wrong, just because they were not being careful when they went to go cheat and sleep around and give it back to you. Drug, drug usage. Um, so there are ways to get it. You have to think about, there are babies born every day who are born with HIV and it's nothing they did to get it. You don't know what happened to that person. So don't be judgmental. Just know that that is another human being who deserves love, who deserves to live just like everybody else. So it just made me sad because it brought some feelings I had because I had a friend back in San Diego who was a mother and married for 17 years and three beautiful, beautiful kids um, who died um, due to complications 
uh, of AIDS, which she was, it was pneumonia that she passed away from. And that's usually one of the main ones that takes them away from us. And it just devastated me mainly because I thought she's going to have three beautiful children in this world without a mother. And then on top of that, her husband that she had for 17 years, they had divorced two years before. So he was nowhere in the picture. He wasn't even taking care of the kids anymore. And she was pretty sure he's the one that gave it, gave it to her because she hadn't actually been in, had any sexual encounters with anyone other than him. And she hadn't had any blood transfusions and used any drugs. So she went to talk to him about that and he changed his number and moved away. He's, he didn't want to hear anything from her. So now you have the father who's gone and now the mother is about to pass away. The father is nowhere in the picture. And I'm pretty sure he, at this point, he is probably AIDS. He has probably has AIDS as well. But her last days on this earth, she spent with her family and she went out with them surrounding her. But it was just sad to know that now her parents are taking care of the kids. And I think they should all be out. In, they should be in high school at this point. Um, but it's just horrible to, to bury someone that didn't do anything in this world to get this condition. And it can happen to anyone. So to, for me to hear that there's a possible cure coming about, it's, it's extremely exciting for me because I feel like everyone has the, um, they should have the right to live, you know, and no matter what condition you are diagnosed with, you have to fight. You hear me? You have to fight hard. You don't give up. I mean, the moment you give up, everything goes downhill from there. You don't give up. You have to surround yourself with positive people and those that are negative to you, whether it's family or friends, you cut them out of your life because guess what? They're going to drag you down. You know, you have to keep doing what you have to do. And it doesn't, don't worry about if they, if they don't want to, they, they're mad at you or pissed off. Let them be what they're going to be. The one thing you're going to have is your life. You have to stay positive. You have to never give up. When I was first diagnosed with end-stage renal disease uh, and my kidneys started giving out, I didn't get depressed. I didn't get depressed. It just made the fight in me even stronger. I was like, huh, this is another thing I have to overcome. So I fight every day harder than I can possibly think that I ever could. I fight and I stay alive. I might be a little um, basically introverted sometimes because Sometimes I do that to protect myself, you know? No one's going to take better care of me than me. And sometimes people don't understand that. Like, I can cut people off. And the reason I cut people off is because if I don't see you being a positive source for me, then you're a negative source for me. And I will just cut off and not have anything to do with you. And I have to live my best life possible while I'm here on this earth. So in saying that, I just feel like everyone... Has to, un has to understand when you get diagnosed with something that you cannot change or do anything about, your whole aspect and way of living and thinking changes. And some people, you might lose a lot of friends, but then those real ones will be there for you no matter what. So with all of that being said, I do encourage you guys to listen to the interview. It's in the New York Times. If you Google it, it'll come up New York Times. And it's... um. It's a great article. That, like I said, the reporter's name is Michael Barbara, and he interviewed uh, Peter Staley. And I think the title under it is Second Person to be Cured of AIDS. So make sure you check that out, read up on it. It's great information to have because trust me, if you don't know anybody that has HIV, I guarantee someone you know knows someone who has HIV or AIDS. So you have to really, you know, just be alert. You have to watch everything in life. Also, there's another good movie that you guys have watched. It's called The Ryan White Story. I think that was, yeah, I think Ryan White was it called. And that was about that the, the kid, Ryan White, who wanted to go to school, but you had all these parents who didn't want him around their children. So you got to check out the story, Ryan White Story. It's really good. So I'm going to leave you guys with that. I just want to talk to you about that because it was a subject that really touched my heart to know that there are there are steps being taken to get this disease eradicated. Um, but thank you guys so much for watching me here in the recliner, uh, just relaxing and getting some work done at the same time. Thanks so much for tuning in and watching my channel. Make sure you click the subscribe button and, and also the alert button so you get my next video that comes out, okay? 
Thanks so much for watching, you guys. You guys have a great day. Bye. Hey, no, no, no.